All right, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and checking this video out. I said in another video that I was going to be doing um, a little small comprehensive review of a certain product that I use for my cook kit and kind of what I think about it. And then I also said that I need to make a fire, even though it's like 90 degrees, high humidity, hence the Rambo look. Um, but we are going to gather a little bit of firewood. I have some around here, process it down a little bit just to make a small cooking fire and I'll show you what we're working with. Okay, so back to where we were. Um, a little crooked. Sorry for bouncing you guys around. Okay, so like I was saying before, I was gonna go over what I think best little piece of kit, cooking kit, for the money. Uh, before I get into it, you already saw it in a different video. If you haven't already, like I said, feel free to watch it at the end. Um, but I've had this for a few different, for at least three or four years probably, if I think about it. Um, and it was one of, not my first, but it was uh, one thing that I needed and I didn't have it and I saw it at Walmart walking through the camping section. I was just like, hey, that'll be all right, I'll try it. Turns out, every time I go backpacking, if I do any solo nights or me and Dan or something, if I need like a solo kit, now I'm not talking about going car camping with the family where I, you know, it's like the Taj Mahal, I got everything. It's, you know, if it's just me or if I just need a pack light, I have a, what is it, Snow Peak or something like that, little titanium kit, and I still choose this over it, and I just think it's an awesome little thing. Um, so, you know, you don't always gotta spend a lot of money to get something good, um, you know, of decent quality or great quality. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, you can find it at Walmart. This is one of the only things I'd probably ever say that about because most of Walmart stuff is not that great, but their camping section seems to be on point lately, so. This is the Stanley little cook kit made out of stainless steel. And as you can see, this thing has been used and abused and she's still ticking. So as you can see here, this is the little Stanley cook kit, mess kit. I don't know what they call it at Walmart. Um, small little stainless steel, what is it? I don't know, 700 milliliters or something maybe? But it's got your markings here, it goes up to 20 ounces on here and then you have this much. But it comes with two little nesting cups. Pfft, I need to get a fire going because the bugs are horrible. Um, it comes with two little nesting cups, which are meh, okay, I guess, you know, but I just get rid of those. Uh, throw them in the car camping, you know, tote or something like that. Um, but as you can see here, I have used and abused it and kind of modified it. Um, on the top, on the lid here, I don't know if that'll focus or not, there we go. On the lid, it normally comes with a little plastic, green, greenish plastic thing. Uh, take my word for it, just get rid of it because it's gonna melt if you do anything like I do. If you're cooking over like a propane stove all the time, it's probably fine. But if you do a lot of fire cooking or you need to build a tripod or something like that, that's where this thing didn't shine. So that the first time I did that, it melted. Went to grab it, it melted. I dropped the lid into the fire. So I just put a little piece of wire on there, looped it around like a key ring or something would work great. Um, the only other downfall was that it didn't have a bail to hang it. All it had is this handle that locks into place, like I said, so if you're cooking over a little fire, it's fine. You have your lid, you can, you know, whatever. But all I did was I tapped a little, a little hole in it, put some wire. I got, you know, a whole roll of this stuff, so when it goes bad, I just replace it, and then just looped it around the back side of the handle there, so you have your own little bale. So if you need to hang it, voila. And then you can just bend it over, and I got a bunch of that wire, so it's no big deal if you ruin it. So if you get rid of the lid, normally inside is the nesting cups. Like I said, I get rid of them. Normally I have one of the uh, stainless steel other nesting cups, like for Nalgene bottles, um, usually on the outside of this. And what I'll do is I'll take my bandana, I didn't bring it out today because I didn't need it, but I'll either have it on the outside of my canteen in my you know water carrier, or else I'll have it on here and I'll cover this with a bandana or what really works well is those ShamWow things. Cut like a section of that, shove it in there pretty much just to keep it from rattling in your bag. But just today, a little, little day hike. Thought I'd come out here and cook, so 
thought I'd shoot, shoot this little video of what I use. In there I just keep a bandana, it's good for, you know, everything. Um, and then inside here I normally just keep some random stuff. Uh, you can put whatever you want in it, you know, if you're out for the day or out for two days, you can just cram it full of stuff, whatever you need. So in here, first thing, I have a stainless steel hook, um, and that is, so when I build a tripod, if I use cordage or a stick, sometimes it's easier, you know, I can whittle a hanging stick, I do it all the time, but these are super handy because you can put the small one on there, and then you can have a sturdier stick hold that. Um, or if you do any other sort of configuration to cook it, you can hang it like that. It's a lot easier to grab than grab down here. So that's why I have that. It's an S hook, whatever. And then inside here, I keep a little, uh, was that the CRKT Eaton tool? Uh, it's a crappy little fork. You know, it's cool that it's small and it's got all of these useless things. I'm not going to use it as a wrench, never have. It's got a cap lifter. That's pretty handy, but I can pop a cap pretty easy with whatever else I got. So then I just keep some breakfast, Belveda, some oatmeal, some instant coffee, and then I keep some little wet wipes in there. So that's just what I got in there now. And then it just goes all back together here. You can take whatever you have. I recommend carrying a bandana or whatever sort of article of clothing or cotton or whatever you got and shove it down inside there because once you do it without doing that, the rattling will drive you crazy while you're walking. And then with that, a lot better than tink, 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 tink. And then, I, like I said, I keep it in this little red knapsack so I don't get stuff dirty. And in here, I actually brought three <clears throat> delicious little smoked sausages, so I'm gonna cook those up with some of this ramen. Then I got my my cutlery, my utensils. So yeah. So I think I blabbed enough about the old little Stanley. It's definitely worth it. I think it's like 15 bucks, give or take, and it's one of my go-tos. I'm not paid to say any of this by any means. I mean. I'd like to, but I'm not. It's just something that I like. So you can find these at your local Walmart. Pick one up. They're worth every dime. Hey, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. There's a little box over here, over there. Click it. What's it hurt? Um, but other than that, I want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Did I mention it was hot? So, got our little cooking fire started over here. Can you hear that? Some geese are going crazy. So like I said, got the little cooking fire going in here, down at the bear cave. And on today's menu is going to be, we have, my little cook kit that I already talked about um, that we're going to be doing all the primary cooking on. Going to put a little water in there uh, to get boiling. We have from New Hall, these are venison smokies pre-cooked. I have them wrapped up with a frozen water bottle so they're still cold. And then some ramen. So that's going to be our feast today. Mm. It sounds delicious on this hot, hot day. Hence the small little fire, but should work out just fine. Get this bad boy tamed down a little bit. And luckily, down here at our spot, we keep an alternative means to cooking. I'll we'll do the big one today. I do have a tripod, but this is easier for today. Man, I'm sweating. I'm gonna get a little bit of water out of my canteen. Get you turned here so I can see what's going on too. Get all the contents out of my 
bush pot. Hydrated. Let's just set that off to the side. Let her get nice and warm here. Okay, so like I said here, not the greatest, but work surface, but it, it'll work. got some of these venison smokies. I'm just gonna quarter out here. So I got the venison smokies. And then we got some ramen. Take that little pack of delicious out. Keep it all Nice and crushed up there. Camera's falling. As you can see here, got the venison smokies, busted up ramen, and uh, now we're just gonna wait for water to get a boil. Just a small little cooking fire, so just wait and get that a boiling. Well, I'm sitting down waiting for this to cook. Thought I'd tell you a little story about this little billy pot that I got from Walmart. Um, like I said, I don't have a tripod or anything, so this is gonna be, be a challenge. That was a few years ago, a couple years ago, me and Dan uh, went and did a winter camp uh, overnight up in Yellow River State Forest you know, hike in, the whole works. And the only pot that we brought was this little Stanley pot from Walmart. And this was before I modded it and did any other type of stuff to it. But, you know, it did the job. We got in there, we each had one Nalgene bottle or of water in our, in our packs and, you know, walking out miles to get to our spot and doing more of a, you know, backpacking primitive type bushcraft camp. Um, we did use hammocks, but there was like, I don't know, six or eight inches of snow on the ground. And sometimes during the summertime, they have firewood for you. And when we got out there, I think it was like early January, they didn't have any firewood. So we get out there, we had a hatchet and our saws and stuff like that. And, you know, busted our butts to, to pretty much get what we needed to stay warm and dry our clothes off. but ran out of water quick and we passed two streams uh, on the way in thinking you know well we can just melt snow you know melting snow is easy and there should be a stream nearby so we get out there and you know we get set up we got a decent fire going we put the last little bit of one of our water in there to I better stir this while I'm talking um, put the last bit of our water into the uh, the pot and added some snow to it so that you know when the time came and got a good fire going we could melt it a little quicker and a little easier and <laughs> it took forever all we had was this little Stanley pot and I didn't put the bale on it yet it still had the plastic handle and we'd sit there and if you ever you know try to melt snow for drinking water you can drink it faster than you can collect it so to speak so I get the idea, well, if I close the handle, and you can see the handle, how it flips over and locks, well, it's not that good of a lock. So at the time, I just tied a piece of paracord to it, and we had a, I think it was a tripod or some sort of stick configuration over it, and <laughs> I don't know, we, it was just about done, just about done, and that freaking thing with the weight of the water from the snow melting, adding more snow, melting it, uh, 
was too much to bear for that little handle. So, you know, an hour's worth of trying to melt snow for drinking water, if not longer. I mean, we did this several times. It finally broke loose, dumped on top of our fire, almost putting out our fire, and getting rid of all of our drinking and cooking water. So we fought with that for quite some time. Obviously we got it to work. It did the job. In the meantime, we were soaking wet from the hike in. We put, we built a drying rack and stuff like that. I wish I had video from that, but I wasn't really doing video then. And we set our shoes. We had like hiking shoes and hiking boots on because we didn't want to wear our winter boots and get super sweaty. And even though we did anyways, they got soaked. So we tried to dry them out by the fire and sure shit we're sitting there and we it smells like burning rubber after already burning you know wasting our water and stuff like that it was it was a heck of a time but sure shit we turn around both a single shoe from each pair the sole was melting man we couldn't do anything but laugh at it you know we're trying to get get our bellies full and stuff before we go to bed and dry out our boots so that they're dry in the morning and stuff like that and, it was just a snowball event and you know we finally started cooking and getting our bellies full of food and we ate like freaking kings i tell you what we brought enough food for three days we ate it all that first night and we just gouged down thinking we could sleep better with a belly full of food so and we did but a little later right right at sundown we're sitting there and for for the past hour or two we're like man you know we're down in this ravine with these real high bluffs and stuff and uh bluffs and stuff but we hear this and we think it's the wind, you know, in the tops of the trees when it hits hits the top of the trees. That's what it sounded like up on this up on this uh, this hill that we had off to our side. And we're like, man, that wind sure does sound like running water. And we said it a couple times before finally we're just like, hey, let's go down this hill a little bit, you know. And uh, it was a spot that neither one of us had been to. And previously, the last creek that we crossed was dry, so we figured it was dry, well, frozen or dry. And we walked down there. It was a, it was a runoff stream, freaking from the snow melting up on top of the hill, filling back up the creek. Literally 30, 40 feet from our campsite was a running creek. I mean, crisp, clear water. We could have just drank it straight straight from the tap if we wanted to because it's all spring fed, spring fed creeks and snow runoff and we didn't we had our filters and stuff so we used them but I just thought that was a funny story just all that time fighting and fighting in mountain snow and turns out that there was a perfectly good water source just if we would have just hiked down another 30 feet it would have been right there and would have saved us a lot of hassle but pretty much the end of the story is is that we got our bellies full, we climbed into our hammocks with our sleeping bags, and probably slept one of the greatest nights. I mean, it got down cold, like single digits, low double digits, woke up to frost. I've told the story before, but I mean, I slept like 12 hours. I got two kids, I never sleep 12 hours. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, I think uh, my grub's about done, so I'm gonna chow down. All right, I just slowly let it die off, barely got any coals, and it just stopped bubbling. As you can see there, let me get my spoon here. Got smoked sausages in there, I got three of them cut up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Put this down and get ready to grab down. You know what? I think I cooked enough for two. Sausages, oh man. Mm. Ah, even to wash it down, a little cerveza. With the best koozie ever. Plug. Well, it's uh, a quarter after seven, Got about an hour or so, maybe a little more daylight. 
I'm gonna chow this down, get cleaned up, put some stuff away, and mosey on out of here. So, if you're still watching, thanks. Give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one. Mm. Focus on it. Oh yeah, focus. You want a bite? Want a bite? It's mine. Bye now.